Way well, hello everybody. Welcome to Ask Aaron this week. Uh, back at it and raring to go. Got some great questions this week. My message was on obedience and uh, I think it went well. You can watch that hillcityhudson.org backslash media. You can watch it on the app, Facebook or YouTube as well. Going to jump into these questions, but as I always do, I want to say these are my answers, not the church's, and I hope they agree with me, but no guarantees. And if uh, you'd like to continue the conversation, jump into the comment section down below, and we'd love to have you uh, leave your thoughts and feelings there. All right, let's jump into the questions. Number one, God sent his spirit to the church in Acts. Isn't that kind of a dated concept? Because now we have all the info at our fingertips. Apparently, uh, the question is implying that we don't need the Holy Spirit because we have Google, all the answers right there. Um, I would say no, it's, it's not a dated concept in any stretch of the imagination. Sure, we have more uh, information now than uh, that the church had in the book of Acts, right? We can access the Bible on our phones or, uh, you know, pull up uh, Google on our computer and, and research all sorts of different things. Um, but that is not how we live life, where we just pull up every single question or circumstance that we have uh, with Google or, or by, you know, referencing uh, YouVersion or whatever, uh, you know, different thing you have. The Hill City app has a Bible. You can use that one. Um, there are moments and times when... Um, we pray and we want to hear from God's Holy Spirit for our unique circumstance and our unique situation. And there are all sorts of unique and varied circumstances that are not directly referenced in the Bible. And so, no, God speaks to us through his spirit that he promised would live inside of us. And his spirit does live inside of us and tells us how to act, what to say, when uh, to say nothing and when to say something, how to behave, how to answer people's questions, all these different things uh, that God's Holy Spirit does for us and, and in us and through us helps us to, to be the people that God created us to be and do the things that God created us to do. So the Holy Spirit is not just there to answer our questions and, um, you know, to necessarily be the, the thing that gives us, you know, the answer to every unique situation. First of all, the Holy Spirit isn't a thing. He's a person and we have a relationship with him. And second, um, the Holy Spirit works in us and through us and does things in us and through us and changes us and, and molds us and makes us into better followers of Jesus and better um, children of God. And so, no, the, the Holy Spirit is not an outdated concept simply because we have access to more information. In fact, uh, you could maybe argue that because of all the things that we have the ability to use and, and have at our fingertips, the Holy Spirit is more necessary now than ever. All right, next question. Are there rules in the Bible we should not obey? And again, I know the question asker and uh, so it's a it's a challenging uh, question to divorce from the question asker, but I will try my best to do so. Sure, uh, let me uh, you know like here's here's my Bible. Well, I got a piece of paper with it, but here's here's my Bible, right? It's pretty big, fairly thick. Um, I've got one on my computer that's identical to it, and I can open up uh, to what's this? I mean, I can open up to. Leviticus, and uh, I'll read Leviticus chapter 5, verse 20, oh, chapter 4, verse 22. When the leader sins, doing unintentionally any one of all the things that the commandments of the Lord said not to be done, and realizes his guilt, or the sin he has committed has been made known to him, he shall bring as an offering a goat, a male goat without blemish, and shall lay his hand on the head of the goat, and kill the goat in the place where they kill the burnt offering before the Lord, because it is a sin offering. Uh, that's a rule. That's a rule that those people uh, were supposed to follow. It's a rule that God's people followed for, you know, thousands of years. However, uh, we don't need a goat anymore because Jesus was uh, God's final sacrifice. That's why we call him 
uh, the Lamb of God. He was slain for our sin as payment for all those mistakes that this leader and every other leader in the world makes. And so uh, Jesus changed the ballgame. And there are all sorts of rules in the Old Testament um, that people no longer uh, need to follow because of what Jesus did. There's an old and a new covenant. And there are just way too many rules to get into um, about which ones to follow and which ones not. The, the biggest clue is that if there is a rule referenced in the New Testament that is from the Old Testament, obviously it's one uh, that God expects us to continue uh, to to pursue. It's a rule that God asks us to continue to follow. And um, there are things that Jesus taught that reference things from the Old Testament. There are writings by John, Peter, Paul, uh, that, that reference the Old Testament. There are things in the Old Testament that still apply to us. And there are things that we can learn from the entirety of the New Testament. I'm in no way suggesting that we can just throw the, the Old Testament out. I meant Old Testament. There are things that we can learn from the Old Testament. We should not throw the Old Testament out. But are there rules in there? Like, are there things in Leviticus and Numbers and that we don't need to follow anymore because of what Jesus came and did and how he changed uh, the entire game? Yes. So are there rules in the Bible that we shouldn't obey? Uh, in the sense that, like, you don't have to. Yeah, there are things in there that you don't have to do anymore. Um, if this question is saying, hey, like there's 10 commandments and is there one we no longer have to obey? No, like you, you need to obey God's commands to his people. God never changes. And so if God said, don't murder somebody, don't murder anybody. If God said, don't commit adultery, don't commit adultery, like that hasn't changed. Um, but like there's a rule about not wearing mixed fabrics, like that, that has changed. Like you can wear polyester. It's, it's okay. Um, I think that's all I have to say about that. Uh, has God grown more tolerant of humans? I don't see a lot of smiting going on like there was in the Bible. Uh, has God grown more tolerant of humans? I don't know the answer to that question as I'm not God. What I would say is God has given all of us one final choice. All of us who lived after the lifetimes and uh, resurrection of Jesus have been given a choice. We either accept him or we don't. We either follow him and his teachings and his life and, and we trust that his life, death, and resurrection is payment for our sins and uh, we live as though that were the case and we worship him as though that were the case or we do not. And we as Christians believe that there will be a, a final judgment and that God will judge uh, the living and the dead and he will um, bring those of us who have claimed Jesus as our Lord and Savior into his presence for all eternity and those who have chosen not him will be sent away from him for all eternity. And that seems to be the biggest smiting that there will ever be, right? That there is an eternity and that uh, some people will spend eternity separated from God in what we refer to as hell. And, um, you know, is there a lot of smiting going on like in the Old Testament? No, but like there were all sorts of different um, rules and, and ways that uh, God moved and worked uh, in and on the earth and through his people and in his people in those times. And there were prophets that spoke on behalf of God. And now we have God's word that speaks on behalf of him and God's Holy Spirit that lives inside of us and speaks to all of us who follow him on, on his behalf because he is God, right? The Holy Spirit is God. I already said that. So um, there is no smiting that we're made aware of like there is in the Old Testament. And that, I mean, you know, yeah, God caused uh, certain people uh, to, to not get certain things or, or to, you know, uh, pass away early or whatever the case may be, right? Whatever biblical passage you want to reference as smiting, um, I, I do think that there are still circumstances in which people don't follow God and they don't do the things that God wants them to do. And so God... Um, chooses not to um, bless them in ways that they could be blessed for following him. So, you know, that that could be viewed as smiting. I don't, 
I don't know specifically what the question here is asking other than, um, you know, in the Old Testament, it seemed God was angry and vengeful and wrath-filled and all this, you know. Sure. And I think um, God is still angry and upset that people don't follow him and that people don't turn over the entirety of their lives to him. And God is still, um, you know, righteously upset about things in our world that are wrong. But um, he's, he's now set the stage. There is a final judgment. And whenever that is, we are building towards it. And uh, that will be when God makes his final decision on everyone's eternity. And um, it, you just hope that people can find him and learn to trust him and love him and, and give themselves over to him and accept the free gift of salvation that comes through Jesus before then. All right, last question. And uh, every once in a while I get this one and I answer it kind of the same way every time. Um, but just in light of current politics and situations and all the different things going on, would you please explain to me your view, Aaron, on Romans 13 verses 1 through 13 and Romans 16 verse 17. And so in order to do that, I'm going to read at least a little bit of it. All right. Romans 13 says this, let every person be subject to the governing authorities for there is no authority except from God and those that exist have been instituted by God. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists what God has appointed and those who resist will incur judgment for the rulers are not a terror to good conduct, but to bad would you have no fear for the one who is in authority? Then do what is good and you will receive his approval for he is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid for he does not bear the sword in vain for he is the servant of God an avenger who carries out the wrath on the wrongdoer. Therefore, one must be in subjection not only to avoid God's wrath, but for the sake of conscience. For because of this, you pay taxes for the authorities are ministers of God attending uh, to this very thing. Pay to them what is owed to them, taxes to those who are owed taxes, revenue to those whom it is owed, respect those whom respect is owed, and honor those whom honor is owed to. Uh, and then I'll skip ahead to 16 verse 17 here. And it says this, I appeal to you brothers to watch out for those who cause divisions and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught. Avoid them, for such persons do not serve our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own appetites. By their smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the hearts of the naive. Now, do I know uh, for a fact that these verses, it says to be in submission to governing authorities. Um, does that necessarily mean that we are uh, talking about the government that rules over the United States of America? There, at least on some level, uh, yes, it speaks to those who rule over the United States of America. Uh, does it speak to any government ruling over uh, the people in a geographical, geographical, <laughs> geographical? Wow, that was a, that was a great word. Geographical sense, uh, sure, in some ways, right? The the governing authorities that are in power over us have at least in some way been allowed to be there by God. And we should be subject to the laws of our land and to the rulers of our land as long as they do not ask us to do something that is sinful. In every case, when it comes to following the authorities, whether you are following the authorities of your country, your state, your county, the township you live in, or your church, right? Because churches have governing authorities. In all circumstances, you should not allow a person to lead you into sinful behavior. And so if the government creates a rule or a law that calls for you to sin, that calls for you to go against God, you should not obey it. That is the reason that we have been given freedom to choose between doing what 
uh, God calls us to and what men call us to. Because in every situation, it is possible for men to call for us to create a, a world of sin or, or a culture of sin. And so if the government asks you to sin, don't do it. If the government asks you to do something that with good reason you believe to be sinful, not just because you don't want to do it, but because there is good reason to believe that it is sinful, then you should not do it. But otherwise, it says pretty clearly that authorities, um, you know, deserve the taxes that are owed to them, the revenue that is owed to them, the respect that is owed to them, and the honor that is owed to them, and that we should avoid being people who are trying to cause divisions and, and bring us to places of fighting. Our job as Christians is to follow Jesus first, that includes whatever scripture teaches, whatever God has said to us and, and prompted us in our spirit, and then to be upstanding citizens in the country in which we live or reside. And so, um, you know, when you travel as an American, you enter different countries and people say, well, you represent America. Well, that's, that's fine and it's true, but we are aliens in this world, right? Scripture says that, that we are just passing through. We are members of the kingdom first and foremost. And so if you are an American living in America, but you are a Christian, then that means you are a Christian first and foremost, and you represent Christ before anything and anyone else. And so in doing that, um, you should make following him and not sinning your first priority and then following the rules of the land, being respectful. And yeah, sometimes that means doing stuff you don't want to do. Often it may mean doing something you don't want to do, something that you might even think is wrong. And then we've been given the gift of living in a free country where we can elect different officials and try to impact uh, who is in charge and who is not. And we can pray that God brings to power people who see things the way that we do. And hopefully uh, that's what happens. But no matter who is in power, no matter what they say, uh, our first and, and only true uh, identity is found in being a follower of Jesus. After that, uh, yes, obey the law of the land, respect, honor, uh, pay taxes to those who are in power. And don't be one looking to cause uh, divisiveness. The only time that we are to stand up in opposition to those who are in power in our country is if they are calling or causing us to sin. And, um, you know, that, that's a line that you have to walk by reading your Bible and praying and listening to God's Holy Spirit as it prompts you. Um, all of this is difficult and challenging and sometimes it makes your brain hurt and sometimes it makes your heart hurt. Um, but as long as the government doesn't call you to sin, you should do what they say. And, uh, you know, everybody has um, a, a challenge to figure out where that line is. And uh, sometimes we wish it was clearer. And uh, that's, that's what I've got to say about that. Uh, it's a great question. It's It's one that obviously falls into... Um, you know, everybody's mind as we go through different political seasons and have different people in power. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm giving you permission to be a Christian first and an American second, to be a Christian first and a citizen of this world second. But other than that, um, scripture says that we need to honor those who God has allowed to be in position of power over us. All right. With that, I'm going to say thanks, as always, for asking Aaron. Hope you can join us this coming Sunday. Uh, we got a good message coming up on repeat offender sins. So I hope you can join us. Hillcityhudson.org backslash media on the app, Facebook, YouTube, all social media channels. As always, I want to say thank you, and we'll see you next week.